Hi, this is Todd Oltoff from ToddOltoff.com coming back at you with another screencast. And this week we're going to take a look at Apple's new HomeKit Secure Router Setup. Apple's been working on this for a little while and it's finally come out. And so I thought I'd walk through the setup that I'm going to do on my own HomeKit setup. And as you can see here, there's a lot of information about it. A couple of things as you walk through this is to understand that you need to have a router that will work with HomeKit and with their secure router program. Uh, in my case, I have an Eero uh, setup, so I'm going to show you how that works. But you can also get other setups as well to make that happen. Uh, the other thing is, is you want to make sure that uh, as you're setting this up, that you start with the application for the router. You're not going to start this in HomeKit itself. And I'm going to walk you through the uh, various aspects of it because there are two uh, two ways to get this going. You can start the system and it'll work for you and then afterwards you would have to delete and add your items to get a private pass key. So anyways, let me just show you here. I do have uh, Eero. This is the router system that I have. This has been really great for me. I've done other screencasts on Eero and so if you want to go back and take a look at those, I'll put the links up here on the screen so that you can take a look at those uh, screencasts that I've done. There have been some updates to the actual application that runs the router so I may do an update on that later uh, but just wanted you to know that. I do have the Eero Pro system so I've got three of these in my house and I've got two version twos and one version one just in case you're curious and it really has been one of the best routers I've ever had it works really really well so what I'm going to do is switch over to my phone and I'll walk you through the setup process okay so here I am over on my iPhone and as you can see this is the Eero application that runs my routers and you can see right in the middle there it says that my app now works with Apple HomeKit. So I'm going to go ahead and walk through the process and show you how it works. I'm just going to tap on this and so as you can see it's going to give me some instruction on how to use the setup and how to get it all set and ready to go. Uh, again, it, uh, there's a portion of it that you do with the Apple Home app and there's a portion that you do with the Eero app. And so it gives you security for all of your HomeKit devices. And basically what this is going to do is put all of your HomeKit devices on a separate system so that that way they'll be on a separate network. It won't connect with your main network. So that if someone hacks into one of your HomeKit devices, for instance, they can't have access to the rest of your network and run havoc through that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and set up HomeKit. I'm going to just tap the button down below and it's going to ask me to get access to my home data. I'm going to say OK so that it has that access. And so it's going to go through the process. I'm just going to tap this down here again and there we go. You can see that it's walking me through the setup. So the first thing it's going to do is add an accessory to HomeKit, which means that your routers are actually going to be added into HomeKit itself so that they'll show up over there as well and show up as connected. So I have the option to add to Home, Not Now, or Learn More. I'm going to go ahead and tap Add to Home. And so what it's going to do now is connect. And it's adding my Eero Pro. And now it says it's added it and it's ready to go. Now what it's going to tell me is it talked to me about HomeKit uh, accessory security. And so for additional security, uh, Home can manage the network connections of all of my HomeKit devices so that it will basically be running those devices separately instead of me just having them run on my normal network. You see, I can turn on accessory security. If I tap on more options, just so you can see that, I can do this on a device by device setup. And so I can uh, configure the type of internet access that I want to allow each of these to have. You can see that it's defaulted to auto right now. If I just tap on any accessory, you'll notice that for that accessory, I have three different network settings that I can set up. I can choose to restrict the device to home. And so what that does is that's the most restrictive and that will only allow your device to connect inside your home. It won't be able to call to the internet for anything. Now this would be the most secure, so those devices can't phone home or anything like that. The disadvantage is any firmware updates that you may want may not go through because it's going to basically cap uh, the device just to your local network, so it can't go out to the internet. So that could be a problem if you have devices that will need firmware updates. The second is automatic, where I can allow the connections with uh, an automatically updated list of manufacturer approved internet services for those local devices. So it will only connect to whatever sites that that device says, hey, we really need access to these, and they've cleared that through Apple. 
So that would be the automatic. And then you would have no restriction, which just means the device can have access however it wants. It's still going to be on that secure HomeKit network, but its access to the internet is just open. So any anything can access it. So probably the best one is the automatic setting for most cases. If you're really concerned about a device phoning home and you really don't want it to have access to the internet, then you can go to that restrict to home. But you just have to know that any firmware updates are not going to get through. So I'm going to leave it on automatic. I'm going to tap back. But I just wanted to show you that that was there. And it's there for all these different devices here. You can see the different bridges and things that I have. So I'm going to I'm going to say cancel here just for a second and go back here. And what I'm going to do is just tap on turn on accessory security. So I'm going to tap on that. And so what it's going to do now is it shows me my actual Eero network and it's going to ask me what room is this particular Eero in. So I'm just going to tap here. I can choose the room that it's in. And so this particular one is going to be in actually my living room even though it's this family room. I'm going to tap next. And now I have another Eero there. It's going to ask me where I want that one to be. And this particular one is in the dining room. I'm going to tap next. And then my studio one happens to be in my loft. So I can set the rooms for where these devices are actually located. I'm going to tap on done. And so now it has added all of those. It tells me that I've got success. They are now using HomeKit. And you can see that all three of my Eeros now are enabled with HomeKit. Now at any time, if I want to stop using this, I can just tap Disable HomeKit below, and it will remove that HomeKit uh, control and network, and it'll remove my Eeros from the actual Home app. So now that we've set up the HomeKit secure router uh, setup in the Eero application, let me go over now and show you what it looks like in the Home application. So here I am over on the home app and I'm on my living room room. I just wanted to show you that the router doesn't actually show on the room that I set it up in. You'll see that the router isn't there so it will look like nothing's happened. But to find the router what I need to do is just tap on home and I'm going to tap on the little house up on the tiny left area up there and if I just scroll down here all the way down you can see it says Wi-Fi network and routers. If I tap on that you can see that there's all three of my routers they show connected if I tap into them, you see I get more information on where they're located, the application that's running them, just like I would any other accessory. I'm going to tap back here. You can see that the HomeKit accessory security is turned on. I can turn that off just by throwing that switch there. And then here's access to all the devices, the different hubs and outlets that I have on my network that I can then set the individual settings for. So again, if I go into Belkin here, I have access to those three different settings right here. So that's how you would get HomeKit router all set and ready to go. Now, one of the things I want to mention is right now I can run this. It's running it on a separate network. It's secure. That's working really well. But if I want ultimate security on this, what I would need to do is remove each device from HomeKit and add the device back in. And what that's going to do is it's going to give it a random passkey so that instead of a, a predictable passkey for my uh, router or for my network, it's going to give it one that's random so that that way no one can even guess what the password is so that the devices don't even have a passkey in common. So, but to do that, you'd have to remove each thing one at a time. Now, that's a lot of work, and so you may not really care about that level of security, but if you really want the ultimate in security or you've got some concern about a few devices, that's the way to make that happen. Now, the good thing is any new device I add now, since I've enabled HomeKit router, it will get those individual pass keys. You're not going to really see much of a difference to know which is which, so you'll probably have to do that systematically over time yourself, but I wanted to let you know that that's an option on there. So that's the overview of how to set up HomeKit router. Uh, again, it's great that Apple has provided this service because it does add another layer of security. Well, that's all I have for this week. I'll be back at you next week with another screencast to help you learn how to do more things with your Mac. If you're interested in help in setting up your own Mac or software or need some troubleshooting help, feel free to contact me at todd at toddoltoff.com.